Okay, so remember, click with the mouse, then smash your forehead against the keyboard, and you should get the any key to boot from CD or DVD. Remember, guys, stick around to the end, and I will give you some links to the code that I've used within this demonstration. Good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to go check out some more Hyper-V, but this time, we're going to go from looking at the Hyper-V MMC console and doing pointy-clicky to doing Hyper-V within PowerShell and doing typey-typey. Okay, so let's get straight into it and see what that kind of looks like and how to go and set this stuff up. Okay, so over here on my test server, I have Hyper-V installed. I've got nothing actually loaded in here. I have no VMs loaded in here yet. That's perfectly fine. Uh, what I do have though, is I have this all files directory and I have a few things inside here. For example, I have an empty VMs folder. We're going to use that later. And we also have this ISO folder and we've got a Windows Server 2022 evaluation ISO. What I'm doing will work with Server 2025, it'll work with 2019, 2016, not a problem. It'll work with anything really. Uh, you could even use a Linux ISO there if you wanted to. Now, the first thing I want to do is actually get Hyper-V PowerShell modules installed. What we can do is we can install these Hyper-V features by using these commands. Enable Windows optional feature and make sure we've got Microsoft Hyper-V Management PowerShell and Microsoft Hyper-V Tools all. This here is the uh, actual PowerShell module. Uh, this here is the MMC console. You can also do that within Server Manager here. If you go to, go to Manage and we go to Add Roles and Features down here and we click through, if you scroll down on the Features section to, where is it? Remote Server Administration Tools. Inside here, there is the Hyper-V Management Tools. They are installed already on this computer, but there they are as tick boxes if you want them in that location anyway. So, let's go have a look at the PowerShell module for Hyper-V. Let's just do this in a terminal instead. So if I now do get dash module and I do list available, okay? What we should find is there's quite a few modules loaded on here because it's a Windows server. Um, but what we should find is we've got the Hyper-V modules actually loaded here. Now, let's just go and have a look at some of those commands. So if I do get dash module, there we go, get dash, sorry, get dash command dash module. It would help if I could type today. And I can do hyper dash V inside here. There are all the Hyper-V commands. There's quite a few of these. So if we do uh, pipe get dash, actually we'll do measure dash object inside here. What you'll see is from that output, there's 245 commands there. There's a lot of PowerShell Hyper-V commands, um, but you don't need to memorize them. Okay, don't worry about it too much. Let's go and have a look at the documentation piece and just check it out there as well. So over here on the Hyper-V PowerShell module documentation page, this is a list of all the commandlets again, um, with all their associated detailed documentation. You might think to yourself, okay, this seems like a lot. Do I need to memorize this? And a lot of things with PowerShell, no, you don't need to memorize this. A lot of PowerShell is pretty human readable. Like for example, to be honest, if you go down here and have a look at something like new dash VHD, new virtual hard drive, I mean, what's that gonna do? It's gonna create a new virtual hard drive. New dash VM, what's that gonna do? It's gonna create a new virtual machine. If I go and have a look at that command for new dash VM, there's a lot of switches for this command, but as we know from before, there's a lot of settings within virtual machines inside Hyper-V for us to configure. What you have to kind of remember with PowerShell and Hyper-V PowerShell is anything you can do pointy clicky, you can do typey typey. Okay, that's that's the rule. Anything you can do pointy clicky, you can do typey typey. Uh, and from that point on, as long as you have an idea of what it is you want to do, uh, then it should be relatively easy to figure it out in PowerShell. But let's go and have a look at a few examples of that. So over here, we're gonna start with the simplest possible thing. We're gonna start with a new VM and a new switch. Now, as we know from previous, if we have a complete blank Hyper-V environment here, if we have a look at the virtual switch manager, we won't have any switches. I want to create a switch. In fact, I want to create a private switch, not an internal switch here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just change that switch type to private and notice the nice little drop down box I actually get here because I'm using PowerShell ISE. I could use VS Code here, but we'll just stick with PowerShell ISE for the moment because it's pre installed on everybody's server. Uh, the same with the $PS version table. Now, this is actually PowerShell 5.1 stuff. This is not PowerShell 7, okay? Uh, even on uh, server 2025, this is PowerShell 5.1 because Hyper-V uses a lot of the older services that are built into Windows Server, a lot of the closed source things in there as well. 
So don't worry, um, you can kind of mix PowerShell 5.1 and PowerShell 7, but for the moment this is all PowerShell 5.1. Let's just go and run that, we'll just run one line there, and we're just going to create a new switch. There we go, very quick and easy, new switch, and if we go into my switch manager, there it is, lab switch, not a problem. Now I want to create a new virtual machine. I don't have to use, with this new VM command, all of these individual um, switches. Okay, like for example, if I literally just come in here, take a, a take a shell like this, and just do new dash vm, straightforward. What it's going to do is it's going to create a new virtual machine. That's it. It's done. Uh, it doesn't ask me for anything at all. It calls it new virtual machine. If I go into settings, it actually sets up with a gig of RAM. It sets up with one processor. It sets up, as you can see, with IDE controller zero and IDE controller one. It sets up as a generation one machine. But that's fine uh, for us at the moment. We don't we don't really want that. We want a bit more configuration. So let's delete this virtual machine. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to give it more switch statements down here. So new dash VM. We're going to use test VM01. We're going to change the startup memory. We're going to have generation two, and the VHD. We're going to put it inside this E path, okay? Because over here I have this nice little EVMs folder ready to take that virtual machine's hard drive. We're going to have a new hard drive, which is going to run 60 gigabytes. We're just going to change that. Let's just drop that to a five gig hard drive. Um, and this is going to run with the switch name of lab switch, um, which is our name here, which is the private switch. Let's go and run that. And hopefully that should go build out our virtual machine. It's literally that straightforward. I mean, we can make this look a little bit easier. Um, because what we could do with this new VM is we could go and start to use variables if we wanted to. So you could use dollar name equals um, apple, and you can go and drop that inside here instead. So instead of test VM1, we've got a variable called apple, just to clean it up a little bit. And the same with all the other options that we've actually got down here. So we just have to change variables. That's fine. Let's go look at that test VM1. It's there. It's good. It's OK. Let's go to settings of that. We can see that it's all nicely configured. We've got no operating system installed on there. This is just a blank virtual machine. But as you can see, it's really straightforward to go and build these things. What we can do also in addition to this is we can start to use fancy PowerShell to loop this and build lots of virtual machines out. So if I come over here, um, I've got a little bit of a script. OK, and what this script is going to do is it's actually going to go and create lots of virtual machines. In fact, it's going to create virtual machines based off this VM names. So say, for example, if I wanted multiple VMs, I wanted to wanted to do a domain controller. I wanted to do a server one. Whoops, helps up. So the one and let's see we can just do another one down here and we can just do a server two okay uh, so these are all going to be connected to that same virtual switch lab switch we're going to change the vhd size we're going to again put these on to 10 gig that's fine two startup gigabytes worth of ram a generation two machine that's fine and an iso path here so e isos win 22 underscore eval underscore iso so if we go and look at this, we've got our ISOs here that will get preloaded. We can then start this and actually install the operating system itself. And the base pass for these VMs is EVMs. But walking you through this script a little bit. First of all, there's an if statement here. Look, if not get v switch switch name error action silently continue. So what does this get dash VM switch do? Well, let's just try it. Get dash VM switch. Amazingly enough, get dash VM switch is going to show us all our virtual switches. So if not means if there is no switch here at all, go and create an actual switch. Uh, but there is going to be a switch. So that entire if statement is going to skip ahead. Um, if not, in this sense, it's going to mean like literally if it's a blank uh, result on get dash VM switch, as in zero switches, we can go off and do a thing. Then we've got a nice little loop. We've got a for each loop. So for each name in dollar VM names, which are these VM names up here, DC, server one, server two, not a problem up here at all. Um, and then what we've actually got is we've got create VM directory. All right. So our creating VM directory is testing that path VM path to make sure that this actually exists. So if VM path doesn't actually exist, it's going to create a new item, create a new directory called VM path down here uh, with no actual output. 
So down into create virtual machine, look, it's the same command down here, new dash VM, but we've just got all these variables actually being added together. There is some extra little trick down here. So the new VHD size in bytes is actually the VHD size in gigabytes multiplied by one gigabyte. That's a bit of a weird um, switch statement down here. So if you need to actually create a new virtual hard drive, during the creation of the VM, it's got a switch called new VHD size in bytes. So you have to make sure to calculate that as actual bytes rather than gigabytes being handed in here, or you'll end up with very, very small uh, virtual hard drives. Again, the switch name and the path, they're going to connect perfectly fine. And then we're going to attach after the VM is completed, you actually have to attach the DVD. Okay, so you have to do these things in like specific orders. So you need to build the VM, then we need to build out the actual virtual hard drive uh, with that VM. Uh, and then we need to actually go and attach that DVD as in, in this case, the ISO for, um, for Windows Server 2022 to that virtual machine. And then we can start it. That's it. In fact, we don't want to start it. I don't want to start all those three VMs. So I'm just going to comment that out uh, and we're just going to change that to created so that it actually makes sense. And let's go run that PowerShell script. Okay, so those three virtual machines are built, but there is a tiny little issue because there was a bug in this script just to show you that you really need to think about the orders of PowerShell with Hyper-V. If we look at something like DC1 down here, it didn't error out. We had this set VM DVD drive here, but there is no DVD drive. If you go and create this new dash virtual machine command here, it doesn't build the DVD drive. Even though I'm telling it to attach later on, it still won't error out. A lot of the things with PowerShell Hyper-V, you start to run into problems like this very quickly um, in the sense that there are sometimes separate commands to do things where you think they should be built into one command. So one of the things I actually need to add down here is I need to do an add dash VM DVD drive, okay? Just to make sure that this is actually added in or created and attached to the VM. So let's put a comment on that. Add VM DVD drive, keep everything nice and neat and tidy. Uh, now I want to do that to the VM name of dollar VM name. Okay. So if I go back over here, let's go and delete these virtual machines because they were created incorrectly. And let's go rerun that script. So let's go and run that script again. So now we've got Hyper-V was unable to find virtual machine names for server two, cannot validate argument on VM name, VM name is empty. Okay, that's because I have used VM name and not name, which is actually inside my loop. So there's another troubleshooting thing for us here. Let's fix things on the fly as we do it. So we'll go and try that one more time, rerun that. Okay, we've got one more error when we've tried to do this. The VHD files already exist. This is actually an interesting point because if I go in here into Hyper-V and I delete a virtual machine, well, it deletes the VM from Hyper-V, but it doesn't actually clean anything up in the directories. Like for example, it doesn't delete the virtual hard drives. So when I'm trying to create these virtual machines again, it's erroring out because those virtual hard drives already exist. So let's go and delete those. And let's go and try that again one final time. Now it's actually going. Okay, great. So we're creating those virtual machines. We're creating them in our script. That's great. Let's go and have a look at the settings for DC over here. And let's go and see, hey, there we go. Our DVD drive is configured with Windows Server 2022 eval. Now, if I go and start any of these machines, I go to connect to them. What we should see is Windows Server is actually going to start booting up from the ISO ready for us to install. Okay, so I got a bit of a problem here um, and that's actually because of another little tweak I need to do with Hyper-V and with these virtual machines when building them from scripts. If I look at the settings of these and I go and have a look at the, where are we, boot order of the firmware, notice I've got network adapter at the top here rather than hard drive or DVD drive, okay? So I actually wanna push that DVD drive all the way to the top and that's going to be my first boot. So let's go modify my script a little bit. Um, instead of actually deleting all this, let's just add another loop down here, okay? So for each VM or name in VM names, let's go down here and let's go pop that in here and let's go and say, uh, loop to push DVD drive to first, okay? So now what I want to do for each dollar name in VM names, I'm gonna add in a 
couple of lines here. So I'm going to add in a DVD, which is a get DVD drive VM name name. So the actual name of the DVD drive is trash because we can have multiple DVD drives. And then we want to use this command uh, set firmware. OK, whoops, I've just pasted that in the middle of another line. So let's go and drop that to a new line down here. Set dash VM firmware VM name dollar name first boot device DVD. Now, what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to run that block of code. I've run everything else. I don't want to rebuild it. These VMs seem to be fine. Let's go and run that. OK, cool. So that's now built out. Let's go back over here. Let's go just check these boot orders. So check the boot order on server one now. There we go. Boot from DVD drive first. Check the boot order for DC. Now we've got boot from DVD drive first. That's great. So let's just stop or turn off that machine. Let's connect it again. And let's go and start that again and see if we can actually boot from the ISO first time. We should get um, a boot that says press the any key. Now, remember, if you can't find the any key, just remember to smash your head against that keyboard. One of the things to remember here in Hyper-V as well, if you are doing the any key boot from CD or DVD drive, you have to remember to click in and then smash the keyboard. OK, so remember, click with the mouse, then smash your forehead against the keyboard and you should get the any key to boot from CD or DVD. Um, you might need a couple of attempts at it. Hyper-V can be a bit sketchy with this. There we go. I've managed to get that with a couple of attempts and got straight in there. Now, it literally gives you a fraction of a second when doing this on, on slightly powerful machines. OK, so you really have to be on the ball, smashing that like button. Well, smashing that like button. Yeah, smash the like button. And smash the subscribe button while you're at it. Um, but yes, you need to click in, smash the keyboard a little bit. OK, so we are all done. Uh, that is a quick overview of creating a little bit of a script to create multiple PowerShell, um, uh, multiple virtual machines from PowerShell. And we also took a look at the Hyper-V module inside the documentation and the 200 uh, individual things there. You can build this up with basic PowerShell skills. If you need that, go and check out some of my PowerShell videos. We talk about loops and variables and PowerShell versions, all the actual grammar of PowerShell that you'd need to kind of get things going. Uh, but this is kind of what it looks like on Hyper-V. Hope you enjoy this quick demo, guys, and you'll join me next time for more PowerShell, more Hyper-V and more Azure. Have a great day. OK, guys, so as promised, the code for this demonstration is actually linked inside a gist. OK, uh, the link for this gist is going to be in the description of this YouTube video, uh, because if I actually do use one of these share uh, options down here, it's actually going to give us this huge URL, which it's not really great for you to go and type out. So I'll stick it in the description. If you don't know what a gist is, it's like paste bin um, for just sticking individual little bits of code into GitHub and sharing them nicely. Think of it like a cloud based notepad. So. Grab your code there, guys, and join me next time. And you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me next time. Goodbye.